Hey everyone, this is a compilation of the best jokes on clothing that I've come up with over my career. If you enjoy it, please hit subscribe. I'll be posting a new video every day during the pandemic. Turn on alerts if you want to be notified of the daily video. Otherwise, wear clothes. It's hard. I can't believe we're still giving clothing as a gift. Because wherever you get clothing as a present, you always open it up and you think, not even close. <laughs> and the person that gives it is always like, you can take it back if you don't like it. That's all right, I'll just throw it out. <laughs> okay. Don't give me an errand. <laughs> Happy birthday, why don't you head to the mall for me? <laughs> if you get my dry cleaning, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I got a robe for Christmas. I remember looking at the robe thinking, wow, I hope I get the flu so I can wear it. <laughs> I mean, who has the time to enjoy a robe? <laughs> what are we, about to shoot a porno? It's a weird piece of clothing. How do we even come up with the robe with some guy? Hey, I got an idea. How about we make a coat out of a towel? <laughs> there could be a belt that goes around, and you could dunk the belt in the toilet. <laughs> be a toilet belt. <laughs> the indoor jacket, the robe. You ever see someone outside in a robe? They look like they escaped from the loony bin. Ah, uh, just get in the paper before the monsters do, right? <laughs> the only time I ever wear a robe is when I'm staying in a fancy hotel. You know, that robe in the closet. I was feeling comfortable when room service comes and I'm in a robe. Like I'm trying to seduce the room service guy. <laughs> Hello, welcome to my room. I'm in my robe, and here's the bed I rented. Is there anything I could do to be more creepy? Oh, he was believable as the creepy guy. I'm wearing all black tonight, because uh, that's easier than working out, right? By the way, these aren't skinny jeans, I'm just fat. Black, the magic of black. Wouldn't it be great if there was something that made people look in shape besides alcohol? <laughs> but that's what black is. It's the beer goggles of color. It's like, you look great. Have you lost weight? Uh, I'm homeless and wearing a garbage bag. <laughs> well, you look thin. <laughs> you know what color I look really out of shape in is a uh, flesh color. <laughs> mm. It is brutal on me. My birthday suit needs more suit. <laughs> I've gotten so out of shape, I don't even feel comfortable buying workout clothes. I always feel like the salespeople look at me like, our restrooms are for customers only. <laughs> I get intimidated by the wall of athletic shoes. You know, they have like a shoe for every activity. I always get caught up in the styles. I'm like, I like the blue ones. They're for pole vaulting. <laughs> Uh, how about the gray ones? Cross trainers! Is, is there a slipper section? I just need to get between places where I'm sitting down. Slippers are kind of my pace, I guess. Even the person who named slippers was lazy. All right, what do you want to call these things we slip on? Uh, slippers. I did see this speed walking shoe. I don't know if anyone's a speed walker here, but if you are, you look ridiculous. <laughs> you ever see the speed walkers? They're like, eh, eh, eh. They always look like a little kid that's been told not to run around the pool. <laughs> no running. I'm not running. <laughs> or, someone in a, or someone in a desperate yet polite hurry to get to the bathroom. Just had Indian food, excuse me. <laughs> A diarrhea joke already? <laughs> Come on, fella. Of course, the weirdest shoes are those baby versions of the adult shoes. My brother-in-law bought our five-month-old these tiny Timberland hiking boots. And our baby can't walk. <laughs> let alone hike. My brother-in-law was like, they're cute. They're only cute because they're ironic. 
It's like giving a blind person a microscope. Look at him fumble with that. Isn't that adorable? I gotta get a picture. He's holding it upside down. Shoe jokes, really? Is that what he's doing? For a special, he's doing shoe jokes. What's next, socks? You ever lose a sock? How long are you supposed to hold on to that other one? Because I got like 80 of them. But I know once I get rid of it, the other one's gonna show up. Hey, where's my brother? He's in a better place. He's in sock heaven. I think it's strange when the elastic goes on socks. It's like the sock saying, I retired, I'm done. I'm no longer a sock, now I'm just kind of a sack. You could store marbles in me, but that sock business is over. That means the underwear, too, the elastic goes. Like the underwear saying, I quit, I'm tired of covering your ass. This job stinks. I'm not gonna take your crap anymore. And other puns. I have been to Victoria's Secret. I had a reason. You know, as a man, you need a reason to be in Victoria's Secret. You can't just be in there like, I'm looking around! See what you ladies are buying. I was getting my wife something for Valentine's Day. You have to reach a point in a relationship where you can get a woman something from Victoria's Secret. It's not like a first date thing, like, thanks for meeting me for dinner. I got you a bustier. Why don't you go in the bagno and throw that on? <laughs> Secretly, every guy wants to go in Victoria's Secret. We walk by the mall, we're like, oh, one day. <laughs> one day I'll have a reason. Because, you know, we've seen the catalog. You don't have to search out the catalog. It just shows up in your mail. You're like, oh, what's this? Seems like there's some good articles in here. <laughs> if I wasn't married, I could get rejected by all these women. And guys, we're just dumb enough. We see that Victoria's Secret store and we think, maybe that's where those models live. <laughs> They're probably in there right now walking around in angel's wings. <laughs> They're probably in there having a pillow fight right now. <laughs> if I could find a practical reason to go in there, it would be amazing. <laughs> and then you finally go into Victoria's Secret and it's like a Greyhound bus station. <laughs> What are you guys in between shifts in here? Where's all the angels? There's just stressed out sales ladies with headsets on. Underwear, underwear, underwear. Where's the open bar? But you're still a guy in a woman's underwear store, and you don't want to look like a creep. That's why every man at Victoria's Secret has the same expression on his face of boring. This place is boring because I'm not a pervert. There's nothing stimulating in here because it's boring to me, especially those huge posters of supermodels, mostly naked. <laughs> Bore. <laughs> I didn't know what I was looking for, so I went up to a sales lady who had the warmth of a TSA screener. <laughs> what do you want? Nothing. I didn't touch anything. I'm leaving. I'm trying to be discreet. I was like, look, I'm looking for something for my wife. Uh, she's, she's very intelligent. Uh, She's creative. Because you can't say I'm looking for a slutty outfit. <laughs> she, she volunteers. <laughs> She's organized. Maybe that French maid's outfit would be good. <laughs> and I was thrown because the sales lady was like, what size? And I was like, size? Uh, female? <laughs> Small? Because you don't want to guess too big. You don't want to be like, hey, you'll grow into it. <laughs> I thought you was much bigger. You can't ask a stranger, like, hey, excuse me there, lady, you look like you got a keister like my wife's. What size undies you got there? Maybe you could try on this uh, outfit I got. <laughs> I just wanted it over with. When I was paying, I assumed the awkwardness was over until they handed me my purchase in a bright pink Victoria's Secret bag <laughs> that I had to carry around the mall the rest of the day that might as well have just said pervert on the side. <laughs> Me and my ladies' undies. I like ladies' undies so much, I got a bag full of them. <laughs> Heading into Burger King. <laughs> Y'all have a Whopper with cheese and a small fries for the ladies' undies. 
When I got home, I realized you have to find the right time to give your gift from Victoria's Secret. You can't be like, hey, when well, you're done changing that diaper, I got another changey poo for you. <laughs> it's a little gift from me to you that's really for me. Because if you're buying a woman something from Victoria's Secret, it's really a gift for you. It's like, here, I got me this. <laughs> Thank you. I'm welcome. <laughs> I'm never going back there again. I know these pants are tight. That's a little gift for the ladies. <laughs> and some of the fellas. Can't control who I turn on at this point. <laughs> These pants are tight, but after I wear them for a week, they'll look fine. <laughs> That's my approach with clothing. Eventually, the clothes go, all right, I'll adjust. <laughs> you could get bigger pants, or I could just stretch out. Whatever works for you, Jim. <laughs> By the way, this shirt, when it's untucked, goes down to like here. <laughs> it's frightening. It's so long. I look at it on my bed, I'm like, is that my shirt or a sleeping bag? <laughs> it's huge. But then when I put it on, I'm like, it's a little tight. <laughs> what am I going rollerblading? Oh, I have a new belt, because uh, my old belt looked like it was tortured on Game of Thrones. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. I think it's because I don't like to give up on the belt hole. I'm like, we're still good. My poor belt was like, I could have been a watch band for David Beckham. <laughs> but a belt for a fat guy serves a different purpose. A thin person wears a belt to hold up their pants. These pants aren't going anywhere. <laughs> a fat guy just wears a belt as a distraction. Distracting from the fact that this is all the same surface. It's just a mini equator <laughs> separating the northern hemisphere from the southern blob. <laughs> and the wider the belt, the greater the illusion. That's just science. That's why Santa Claus, Santa's belt is like a conveyor belt. <laughs> it's not even holding up his pants, it's keeping his jacket closed. <laughs> And we're leaving cookies out for that slob? <laughs> of course, Santa wears suspenders under his coat. Suspenders, the last stop for the fat guy. Because <laughs> eventually the gut gets so big, the pants need to be suspended. <laughs> like a bridge. <laughs> the belt no longer fits across the equator. It must be buckled underneath. Instead of holding up the pants, it drags them down. Because every action has an equal opposite reaction. Forcing one to choose between suspenders or a lifetime of plumber jokes. But hiking is huge. It's huge. There's hiking clothing. There's clothing for walking outside. I thought all clothing was for walking outside. And there's whole parts of the country, the entire Pacific Northwest, everyone's dressed like there could be an impromptu hike at a moment's notice. <laughs> well, I'm going for a uh, coffee, but you never know what a hike might break out. <laughs> so I'll put on some sturdy shoes and a breathable fleece. <laughs> that joke was brought to you by Patagonia. I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, but I'm kind of obsessed with not being interested in fashion. It's uh, something I care deeply not about. <laughs> and I'm aware that not being into fashion is a fashion choice, right? How annoying is that? It's like, oh, you're not into fashion? That means you're in norm core. Why can't I just wear clothes to cover my disgusting body? <laughs> Why must it be a choice? Because the only choice I make when it comes to clothing is, does it still fit me? <laughs> I don't know if you've had an opportunity to fat out of clothes. <laughs> That's a special feeling. <laughs> there are watershed moments in your life, right? When you hold your newborn child or you fat out of a t-shirt. 
It's amazing, because you don't even go to the obvious conclusion. You're like, well, this sure used to fit. I haven't grown since I was a teenager. Oh, I'm a fat ass. Well, time for a burrito. I don't know. The best is when you pack for a trip and you fat out of clothes, but you don't realize until you get there. You sit there and you go, well, I guess I could wear that as long as I don't breathe out. <laughs> or sit down. You ever wear a shirt you can't sit down in? Yeah, you know what, I'm gonna stand. I know it's Thanksgiving, I'm more thankful standing. <laughs> Better angle for carving. I still have all the clothes that don't fit me. They're in my closet in case I have a dramatic weight loss over a weekend. It's ridiculous. It's like I'm curating an exhibit of my weight gain. Well, that suit was from 30 pounds ago, and that sweater was from last winter, and this shirt, this shirt never fit. <laughs> Have you done that? Have you bought clothes that don't fit, thinking that'll be the incentive to lose weight? It's like, well, I've only gained weight for the last 40 years. Maybe this shirt'll turn it around. <laughs> How'd you lose weight? I bought a shirt. It worked. No, fashion's kind of wasted on me. You know, like those fashion shows? To me, fashion shows just look like skinny teenagers walking around in their parents' clothes looking for food. No food out there. All right, I'll change my outfit and look again. <laughs> Fashion shows are rather absurd when you consider they're just people sitting around watching people walk around in clothes, <laughs> which is what people do in clothes every day. <laughs> but at fashion shows, they're so fascinated, they're like, oh my gosh, oh wow. Look at that person walking close. How do they do it? Oh, if only we could watch them do laundry. And we all know what a fashion show is, because we've seen it on TV. In December, they televised the Victoria's Secret fashion show, which is excellent, by the way. Well, that one's different, because there's angels, so there's a spiritual aspect to the thongs they're peddling. Michael Moore's mentality. Fashion's not gonna change his life. It's not gonna change my life. I look the same whether I'm wearing a t-shirt or a tux. I still look like someone who eats fast food. <laughs> Probably because I do eat fast food. I look the way I look. Look, I didn't vote for Trump, but I walked around New York City and everyone the week after the election looked at me like, you did it. <laughs> you did it. And I was like, I didn't do it. <laughs> But after a couple days, I was like, did I do it? <laughs> I know people are scared the, about Trump being president, but I can tell you, as a straight white male, I feel like I'll be okay. <laughs> I'm wearing my shirt untucked, the untucked shirt, the fat man's last hurrah. <laughs> Next stop, Momo. <laughs> You might see a guy with his shirt untucked and think, oh, was he in a hurry? <laughs> Is he going casual? But you should know, someone very close to that man saw him with his shirt tucked in and said, don't do that. <laughs> That's visually unpleasing. You look better not fully dressed. <laughs> the untucked shirt, it's like the male wonder bra. <laughs> There's a surprise underneath and you're not gonna like it. <laughs> this is not an untuck it. <laughs> untuck it, which is a brand of shirt. I do love those untuck it commercials. They present it like some revolutionary technology. It's a shirt that can be worn untucked. <laughs> wow! <laughs> like a magic shirt? That's right. Can't other shirts do that? No, this is a special shirt. It goes with our unzipped pants. 
and our unbuckled belt, and combined with your uncombed hair, you can look unemployed <laughs> and be unwelcome in restaurants. That's unbelievable. <laughs> this shirt is actually a 2XL. That's right, I did it. <laughs> Mission accomplished. There should be a moving up ceremony for when you hit 2XL. <laughs> it is with great pride and slight disgust that we present this garment roughly the size of a circus tent <laughs> to this slob who actually struggles to put on his own socks. He may now burp for no reason at all. I am new to the 2XL community. They've been very welcoming. Uh, did some research. You know what the size after 2XL is? Kill yourself. <laughs> oh, it's 3X! Triple X! That's pornographic. <laughs> it's so fat, it's obscene. <laughs> Triple X does sound like some fat on fat action. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm heading there, hopefully by the end of the show. <laughs> I don't know what happened. All I did was eat abusively for 40 years. <laughs> and suddenly I'm fat? That doesn't seem fair. I am now at the size, when I go in clothing stores, salespeople look at me like, we got nothing for you. <laughs> and you can't use our bathroom. <laughs> when I go out to eat, if I order a salad, the waiter's always like, aww. <laughs> Look at you try. I'm always afraid he's gonna gather the whole staff. The fat pig is trying. The fat pig is trying. Hi, Hollywood. I've always talked about my weight and my stand up, but in the past, after shows, if I ran into audience members, they'd be like, Jim, you're not that fat. You're not that fat. But now, after shows, people are like, good show. <laughs> you nailed it. Hi, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you want. If you want to see more stand-up, I have more stand-up, or if you want to see an original show like Let's Get Cooking or The Mike and Pat Show, that's available on my channel. But also, just know that I'll be posting a new video every day during this pandemic or until the world ends. Please hit subscribe and turn on your alert or notification button.